everyone. I'm Dr. Vandana Lal, the Executive Director of Dr. Lal Fat Labs. I thank Dr. Anurag Agarwal, Dr. Sridhar, and Dr. Vinod Skarya for giving me this opportunity to speak on genomics, the next frontier. What we already know about genomics is its impact of this genomic information and technology has markedly improved the healthcare outcomes, the quality, the safety, and has resulted in cost savings. After having understood the individual genetic makeup and variations, which inform us about the risk of disease, this has not only encompassed the prenatal and the newborn, but has gone also into the childhood and adult age groups. At the present moment, we are using it as a screening tool to more precisely characterize the health conditions, improve the medication selection for patients, and also to design therapies around the disease genomics. This has been a great help, especially in the field of cancer. Now, the current usage of genomics in the field of medicine has been in the field of preconception or prenatal. As we all know, this is the germline genetic testing for recessive conditions and also the cell-free fetal DNA from maternal plasma or the NIPT test. The newborn screening, it has been mandated in a few states of India, but not all, whereas genetic screening is required for newborns. Now, this is not exactly a genetic test, but if found positivity, then the, it'll generate a need for further genetic evaluation. For disease susceptibility, the germline genetic testing for inherited cancer syndromes has become a reality. For screening and diagnosis, now especially for colorectal cancers, we are doing colonoscopies and it is recommended after a particular age group to routinely do colonoscopies. However, if a stool DNA testing can be used for screening purposes, it will be of great benefit to patients because the invasive procedure will be avoided. For prognosis and therapeutic decisions, there are targeted therapies, which are based on the tumor genomic variations and tumor profiling, which has also been a great help in the field of oncology. Monitoring the disease burden and recurrence in this Pharmacogenomics has become a big reality because the same medicine will be required in different doses for different patients. So it is standardizing the dose for a particular patient which will be of immense benefit because it will avoid the toxicity of the drug. Now, thanks to genomics, we can look at a disease on a personal level. This personal genome sequences which can be done at birth will become an integral part of the patient's electronic health record. And once this is integrated with the clinical and environmental data, this will be useful and beneficial in an individual's entire lifetime. The integration of the individual's genomic information with knowledge databases, which will contain your genotype, phenotype correlations, and also the clinical associations will benefit the individuals. Now, storing and sharing of population data, this is very important. It will, by analyzing large data sets, it will be possible to uncover certain patterns and relationships, which were otherwise not evident to us. Now, enormous value of data sharing will help in the progress in genomic medicine, which has now been recognized and is a, going to be a very, will play a very important role in the future. Now, what are the opportunities and challenges for the future in the field of genomics, especially concerning medicine? This will be building of an infrastructure for databases that will integrate patients' genomic and medical information. This will be highly useful for few clinical and for the future research applications. We must establish both national as well as international knowledge sharing platforms which will standardize the approach for recording, sharing, and it will have a fully integrated clinical and genomic database. Now, it is very important to develop an SOP for this so that all the laboratories or all the centers all over the world utilize the same technique for recording data. Then it will become much easier for us to integrate this data. Also, the education of the professional, the public is extremely important. 
we have to engage the clinicians, the health force, and the community in fully realizing what is the medical potential of genomics, which we already know is enormous. Continuing with the challenges for the future, this we have also whatever the opportunities are generated by genomic analysis, they have to be implemented. This implementation is very important so that there is a proper healthcare delivery and the population health management can be done at large. A strategic, holistic, and a cooperative intergovernment approach is required so that there is a successful integration of genomic testing into the existing healthcare systems. We cannot have two separate verticals happening. That is genomic testing is recording data elsewhere and the existing healthcare system is behaving in a different fashion. This integration is extremely important for benefit of the patient. Also, there should be, we have to ensure an equity of access for a range of test applications. This will also lead to cost saving, especially if there is a, we uh, agree to have shared infrastructure and there is a strategic planning around it. Other of challenges which we have to look at in the field of genomics in medicine is the co-occurring variants, the splice site variants, the gene fusions, and also we require to have more trained people who can read the BAM files, that is your binary alignment maps. We do not have enough trained people in India as of now for this purpose. Now, the current position where, as far as medicine is concerned, where genomics is being utilized is to more accurately predict the disease. We are also uh, using to design treatments on the basis of both genetic and non-genetic factors and potentially cure or even eliminate some diseases entirely with gene editing technologies, which has been quite successful in Huntington's Korea. Now, what is the next frontier of genomic technologies? The transcriptome, which is your full range of messenger or RNA expressed by an organism, has been very successful, this technique. But we have to focus on new protocols, which have some of them have already been developed. This will be your chromosome uh, chromatin accessibility. It's very important to understand the chromatin access accessibility because just having a gene, a gene whole exome or whole uh, 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 genome analysis will not, may not uncover all diseases. The histone modifications have to be looked at. Protein abundances have to be seen. What are the cell lineages happening? And we have to go down to the single cell level. The genome activity in a single cell is what is the, the future entails. Now, next levels will be, we all know that these short read technology is extremely popular and we are using these short read technologies at the present moment, and there is not much problem with that. But there are certain issues which are arising due to this short read technology. That is, it can lead to false positive results or even spurious functional associations. In order to avoid that, we have to go into the long read sequencing technologies. These the long reads can span the complex genomic features. It gives you a greater resolution and it gives you a better reconstructed genome. What are the uses of the long reads, especially in the field of medicine? This is being used for the diagnosis of rare hereditary diseases, which have a complex genomic etiology. It will also be useful to identify the, wherever there is a paternal origin of genetic variants. And this is important for uh, risk assessment, for diagnosis and treatment. And one such example is the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, which is quite a common disease in India. Certain cancers will also, which have multiple genomic aberrations, they will be requiring long reads for us to understand them fully and to select a proper treatment for them, these kind of conditions. In diseases like spinocerebellar ataxias and Huntington's disease, we have to read repetitive regions of DNA. This will also be useful if you are using the long reads technology. Structural genomics will become increasingly important, especially where we have must compare multiple genomes rather than you know, stick to the single species genomics. This will help us to get better insights. 
the studies of genes that are important for develop, development of physiology or studies of evolutionary gen genomics of human disease. This will have a complex genetic basis such as in heart disease and diabetes. And now we know that the burden of non-communicable diseases is rapidly increasing in India. And it is very important for us to understand the complexity of the disease gen evolution, especially in these conditions. And as more diseases evolve, this will help us to understand disease better and design treatment better for these patients. Now, genome biology of cis regulatory elements, which is for your non coding DNAs. In addition to that, non coding RNAs with reference to functional studies or comparative analysis is another field we have to look into. The comprehensive analysis of the dynamics of genomes, the spatial properties of genomes, changes in single cell genomes, and what are the relationships between these is very important for the future. As far as medicine is concerned, we have to look at conditions which are associated with aging, genotoxic injuries, and if there is accumulation of mosaic mutations, how does one tackle these conditions? Functional genomics is extremely important. We know that in cancers, we have variants of unknown significance. How they become variants of significance or variants of concern, in vitro studies are required for this because this will benefit the patient for their treatment. Especially in presently, we are reporting a lot of variants of unknown significance in, uh, in various cancers. These patients do not know what, or, or, and their clinicians also do not understand what has to be done. So this is one field of functional genomics, which requires our attention. In concluding, I want to say this is just the beginning in genomics. For genomics to truly revolutionize medicine, it needs to be combined with phenotypic data. Now, what are the roadblocks which we can envisage in this is patient consent, privacy concerns, agreements with companies which, who are contributing to this data, ethical issues, and the speed of data sharing. The speed is the most important thing in data sharing because if we delay, we are also delaying the treatment to the patients. With this, I would like to thank everyone for your kind attention. Thank you.